Dr. James Wilmot is an NHMRC investigator fellow based at the Melanoma Institute Australia in Sydney. Uh, he has his BSc and his PhD from the University of Sydney, and he's going to give us an overview of his work on the codex system so far. Over to you, James. Right, today I'll be talking to you about how we've been using the codex uh, multiplex imaging system and how we've been trying to combine that with uh, single cell RNA seq data to better understand the tumor microenvironment of patients treated with immunotherapies. Uh, it's a dual presentation, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of the image analysis and I love the pretty pictures. Whereas Dr. Camelia Quirks, a computational scientist in the group who takes the FCS files and the big data and makes the amazing plots with them. So it's a combined effort. So just an overview, I'd like to raise some of the clinical questions that we think we can answer with these type of technologies. And the two technologies we'll be, uh, we're trying to combine are the codex system that you've been seeing today. We've been trying to combine that data with uh, single cell RNA-seq data on the same sample uh, to, do, to bring the two technologies together. We think it's gonna be a really powerful tool to understand the tumor microenvironment. And we're aiming to use these uh, tools to understand why patients might or might not be responding to immunotherapies. It's a really important question because in Australia, more patients have died of melanoma in last year than have died in the whole entire period of COVID-19. So it's a real killer uh, in Australians. And the majority of patients uh, who develop metastatic advanced disease uh, often die. So it's a major um, killer in Australian uh, patients. Thankfully, we have immunotherapies, which are highly effective in treating uh, advanced disease. These can be either uh, single agent anti-PD-1 inhibitors or combination of anti-PD-1 inhibitors and CTLA-4. And melanoma has really driven the use of these type of technologies and uh, these drugs. And what we've found is while it's highly effective and uh, the majority of patients are achieving a long, uh, good survival. So we can see here out at five years, the majority of the patients, 52% of patients treated with a combination inhibitors are alive. So that's a great achievement, but it also raises the important uh, question that there's this up to 48% of patients are dying within five years, even with these highly effective treatments. And that's compounded by the fact that the majority of patients treated with these inhibitors will still recur, the disease will come back, and these patients need another type of therapy to try induce a long and durable response. So the two burning clinical questions we have in treating melanoma patients with advanced diseases, when a patient comes in to see the oncologist, is that patient likely to be one of those lucky 50% or are they gonna be in the 50% that needs some other type of therapy to save their lives? And that's a major question we've been tackling. You can, we've been using different things such as predictive tests or models, using clinical data, genomics, gene expression and pathological information, spatial pathology, so tumor um, immune profiling, we're combining that into predictive models to predict who's likely to respond and not respond to therapy. That's not really a part of this talk, but it's something we're focusing on a lot. But the other major question is if you can identify which patients are unlikely to respond to standard therapies, how do we know which drug those patients should get? So if they're unlikely to respond to standard of care therapies, which of the many different inhibitors should that patient get to achieve a durable and long response for their particular tumor? And what we wanna be able to do is uh, move away from a flip the coin of, of the patient achieving a durable response to somewhere where the majority of the patients or nearly all the patients are being cured. It's a major problem. Is if, even if we can identify which patients are unlikely to respond to the standard of care therapies and need another type of therapy to save their lives, there are many other, uh, there's multiple other agents that are able to be given to these patients. So at the Melanoma Institute Australia, we have over 27 immunological agents in clinical trials and over 50 clinical trials. So picking which drug is right for each patient is a major problem facing clinicians and it's something we're trying to address. This is really important because we've seen studies, large scale phase three trials where patients were given combination inhibitors in an unselective manner. So all patients given the drug regardless of their biomarker expression. And this, is, this has ended up to be a negative trial. How we know that things such as IDO are uncommonly expressed in some patients. So in metastatic melanoma, as little as 6% of patients express IDO in their tumor. So it raises the question, what happens if we conducted these type of trials where 
audio inhibitors were only given to patients that were audio positive, could we uh, achieve a much better survival for a subgroup of patients? And to do that, we need to be able to profile multiple uh, drug targets within a single piece of tissue, and as well as understand which cell these drug targets are expressed on to try and understand how they might be, how the drugs might affect uh, the tumour microenvironment. And profiling a tumour microenvironment is a really important question because we, we're lucky that we have multiple agents that we're able to give to patients. However, knowing which agent is right for which individual patient is a major problem. We have multiple T cell and K cell stimulants. We can hit the antigen presentation machinery of the tumours to try and make them more visible to the tumour. We can hit the stroma and vasculature to help uh, remove the support for the tumour. Or we can hit the tumour itself to try and induce tumours in uh, drug-induced tumour death. So with all of these different mechanisms, we need to know which one is right for each individual patient. And we need some technology that we're able to profile all of these in a single piece of tissue and understand which cell they're on. So we turn to the codex system as one of the technologies we're using to profile the tumour microenvironment. Uh, this is Zara Yazin is the research assistant in the lab running the machine. And our system's a codex box, as you can see on the top. Uh, image. We have a Zeiss Axia Observer and um, we have a Photometrics BS, uh, BSI camera. And with this system, we're able to take uh, thin sections, so three to five micron sections of formally fixed paraffin embedded tissue, apply 40 to 50. So I think we've tried 46 antibodies that have uh, DNA barcodes, as we've seen before. We then apply, uh, we incubate the section and then put the section onto the cover slip onto the machine. Then the machine or the codex box will detect three reporters at a time, wash it off and repeat uh, to, till it's imaged all the different um, antibodies and three or four combinations. It then uh, exports all the images for downstream analysis. And on the bottom left, you can see just a high power view of the cover slip well. So the tissue sits in this little well and the reagents are applied and washed off the tissue to achieve the staining. So one of the first staining uh, attempts we used was a 46 marker panel, which included T cell markers, myeloid cell markers, B cells, tumor cell markers, and melanoma specific, as well as actionable drug targets, so immune checkpoint inhibitors, vasculature markers, and multiple phenotypic markers. So a real broad uh, tumor immune profiling uh, panel. One of the first questions we had when we were looking at adopting this technology is, are we able to achieve, let's start a movie here. Are we able to achieve high, um, high resolution imaging? Because we know if we want to do image analysis, you need very high resolution images to get accurate single cell phenotyping. And with the system, this is one of our melanoma sections stained with the panel. We can see the resolution is excellent and we can see uh, compared to some of our other singleplex or up to sixplex staining runs, we can see now we can see every immune cell or tumor cell or vasculature within the tumor microenvironment. So really powerful uh, technology that we're able to profile and characterize all of the cells in the tumor microenvironment. So it gave us confidence that we'd be able to take these images and create uh, useful data from them. We then needed to uh, convert the images into data that we could use to analyze. And we used a, a few different techniques at the time. However, we ended up using the Halo AI system to do our tissue segmentation. And we used the system to, and trained it to look for tumor regions here in the white, uh, blood vessels in the red, and we're able to train it on the stroma or the normal tissue here in the blue. And with the 40 markers, it's quite easy to train the tissue segmenter. We found the tissue segmentation was, the cell segmentation was highly accurate using the watershed um, method and we're able to get each individual cell accurately segmented. This is really important is, it, is if this is inaccurate, then all of the downstream nearest neighbor analysis and all of uh, any analysis downstream is not accurate. We're then able to export out the FCS file into, um, and then import that into the CIRAT or other single cell type technology. So this is where CAM takes over. And Kevin's been experimenting with multiple different tools to try analyze the data and understand spatial relationships. So our main goal was to convert the data into unsupervised clustering 
information where we can uh, identify individual cells based on their protein expression profiles, and then go back into the tissue, which is what uh, is additional to single cell technology, such as single cell RNA-seq, and identify where these clusters are in the tumor. So where, where are these cells located? So that's a really powerful tool that we're able to do with the codec system and the data it produces. So our first use of this technology was to try pilot in a really interesting patient that uh, really interesting patient that the oncologist had identified in the lab. Uh, this patient came in to see our oncology clinic and they had metastatic melanoma. We had a pre-treatment biopsy before they went on to any of the subsequent therapies. And then the patient was given a uh, single agent anti-PD-1 nivolumab. Unfortunately, the patient's disease progressed and grew on this treatment and the patient was given an, a, uh, a second combination inhibitor of anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1. Unfortunately, the patient's tumour grew again and progressed and was resistant to these therapies. We then had a tumour biopsy taken from the patient when they progressed on these two standard of care therapies. The patient was then given anti-PD-1 and LAG-3, another novel inhibitor to try and induce a response. Unfortunately, again, the patient's disease was progressive and grew and was res res resistant to treatment. The patient was then given a levatinib, a VEGF and kin multi-kinase inhibitor in combination with anti-PD-1. And fortunately, the patient had a partial response and a durable response from this uh, last treatment. And then we have a biopsy taken from this patient when they progressed on all of these therapies. However, we have a biopsy taken just after and when they're res uh, responding to levatinib and PD-1. So this really interesting patient gave us the opportunity to study the evolution of tumor, um, my, the tumor microenvironment during treatment try and understand resistance and how that resistance is reversed. We have a portion of the tissue that's put into formal and fixed tissue that we can run through, we can section and run through the codex system. And the matching lesion, we've also performed single cell melanoma dissociates where we've got all of the single cells uh, dissociated out into a solution and we can perform single cell RNA-seq on the melanoma dissociates. So our pipeline was to combine these two technologies, the codex, multiplex uh, system with a single cell RNA-seq system to try and understand, uh, to try and identify unique and interesting populations in the single cell data and then use the codex data to try identify where these cells are within the tumor microenvironment and what cells are around them. So as a path group, uh, we're really interested in getting high quality images and we found the majority of the markers work uh, very well and we get images that we're used to seeing with other technologies such as opal or the, any of the other immunofluorescent technologies. So we're quite confident with the staining we're getting and we're able to perform accurate tissue segmentation, cell segmentation, and then export the FCS files for subsequent analysis. CAM was then able to cluster the cells. So we have in seven biopsies, we accumulated over 2 million cells. So this is a huge number of cells to process and analyze and CAM was able to perform unsupervised clustering of the different biopsies from this interesting patient. She's then able to uh, map and anchor these individual clusters in the codex data back to clusters developed based on the single cell RNA-seq data. And she uses the nearest neighbor weighted analysis to try match markers that are common between the two platforms and assign like clusters to each other. So T cells in a single cell to T cells in the codex data. And I'll just show some examples of the success of that. So this image showing that on the top, the columns are the individual single cell RNA-seq based clusters. And on the rows, we have the codex stating for the individual clusters. And as we can see, like we get from our single cell RNA-seq site seq data, we're able to um, identify clusters within, within these images and then investigate the protein expression of the 40 markers, uh, 40 markers within each cluster. And we're able, the benefit that we're able to do with the, single, with the codex data on top of the single cell RNA-seq data is we're able to go back into the tissue and identify where these clusters are and where these cells are located. So that's really important when studying the tumor microenvironment. So here are some of the images. So we have a UMAP based uh, cluster here, red showing uh, the different positive cells for the cluster. And below we have the codex based image of each of those uh, representative areas. We can see here for cluster three based on the single cell RNA-seq, 
that is associated with melanoma cells um, lo co-located in the image below. And what, just um, highlighting the utility of the codex system, we can see cluster five, which represents B cells, which is a large proportion of cells in this tumor microenvironment. And if we're looking at single cell data alone, we think it may, made up a major proportion of the tumor. However, when we look at the image, we notice that all of these B cells are in the stromal region, peritumor region around the tumor, not infiltrated into the tumor. So we can gain spatial context to these cells uh, by combining the single cell data with the codex data. So going back to our patient, we have uh, the biopsies run through the codex and we can see on the top row are the pre-treatment biopsies, the middle row are the prog biopsies. So these are when the patients progressed on all of the standard of care therapies. On the bottom, we have the patient's biopsy taken when they're responding to P1 plus levatinib, the vasculature inhibitor. One of the first things we uh, notice with the uh, blood vessel markers, CD31, 34, we can see changes in the vasculature density and size following treat the different treatments. And that's something we're not able to do with our single cell technologies. So we can see large vessels in the preterm biopsy. However, at the prog biopsy, we can see these micro vesicles have developed with very small vessels uh, spread throughout the tumor. However, once the patient's treated with PD1 plus levatinib, we see again large vessels forming within the tumor microenvironment. We can, within the same section, we can then go look at uh, T cell infiltrates. We can see in the pre treatment biopsy, the tumor was, uh, the immune cells were excluded from the tumor microenvironment. When the patient had progressed on all of the standard therapies, there are very little, if any, T cells within the tumor microenvironment. However, when, they've been, when the PD1 plus levatinib inhibitor has been added, we can see a, um, a large increase or infiltrate of T cells into the tumor microenvironment following this therapy. So we can really look at the changes in the uh, immune profiles during treatment using this technology. From the single cell RNA seq data, we identified changes in MHC class one expression during treatment. We can see in the top pre-treatment biopsy, um, large vessels with the tumor uh, exp endogenously expressing MHC class one throughout the tumor with high expression in all cells. However, at the progression biopsy, we can see these micro vesicles with very little MHC class one expression in the tumor. So loss of MHC class one expression, which is a known mechanism of resistance to immunotherapy with only a little bit of MHC class one expression around the blood vessels However, when the patient is treated with PD-1 plus levatinib, we can see a dramatic increase in the size of the blood vessels and a return of MHC class 1 expression, and that coincides with a dense increase in CD3 infiltrate uh, migrating from the vessels into the tumour and uh, attacking the tumour. So we can really understand the dynamics of the tumour biology look, um, using the technology. At this stage, it's a work in progress. Um, CAM has been developing multiple different methods to analyze the data downstream, but we're happy with the images we're getting and the type of data. Work. It's just a matter of developing the pipeline to analyze them. Some things to consider when working with the codex that we've learned with our experience so far is the data size is big. So it can get up to one terabytes per slide. So it's something that needs to be considered if you're going to undertake this type of analysis. And when we've been using the Halo AI system to tissue segment and cell segment one image, has been taking uh, about one day. So with 18 CPU, 11 gigabyte GPU, it's taking a day to process a single slide. So it is large data. The other major thing when you're going into pathology, when you're used to working with uh, whole sections is that you can only stay in a cover slip in this system. So 22 millimeter cover slip of that, you can look, you can analyze around 12 to 15 millimeters of working area in within the um, well. So the size of the area you can analyze is not a whole slide. Uh, we also encountered some problems with sensitivity of some of the markers. So we originally stayed with 46 markers, however, only 40 appeared to work. And some of the markers such as PD-1, PD-L1 required amplification with the tyramide system. So that might be something to consider with some of the lower expressed uh, markers moving forward. And as I've been, as I hope I highlighted today is that data analysis is still a very active area of research using this data. So it's exciting, but it's also um, something that needs to be planned out and considered when um, moving into codex um, data. Thank you for your time. I'd like to thank Dr. Camilla Quirk, who's a computational biologist who did a lot of the clustering and the downstream analysis. 
Zara Yassine, who is a codex scientist who ran the machine. Oliver from Akoya did some of the initial staining when COVID first hit, and a single data was generated with a collaboration with Alex Warbrick from the Garvin. Thank you.